Hey, what's going on everybody? So I did a video recently, very recently, about the LD selection part of this monster event. And there's also one for regular element Nat 4s. If you remember in Summoner's Way, uh, it's just this event again, right? And if you haven't gotten through that part in Summoner's Way, if you're very new, in the fourth section, in the fourth tab, there's a part where you get to summon, you get to pick which element you wanna summon, It'll fill up this box with monsters, and when you summon the one that you want, you select them and take them, and the event's over, okay? So we did a similar one down here for the light dark. I said I was going to come in here and grab Jamie, and I did. But if you didn't see that video, and you're curious, and you need some some a little bit of guidance on the LD part of this, I'll card to it up there. You can go check that out. And what we're going to do now, there's quite a bit more to, to talk about here. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to kind of go through, and I'm going to try to relatively quickly talk about some of the standout nat fours that that perhaps you should consider grabbing uh, and this is obviously geared toward more newer players if you've been playing for a little bit you probably have a general idea of who you want and there's a lot of right answers here okay there's there's a lot of right answers depending on what it is you want to focus on so uh we're, we're just going to kind of quickly go through and i'm going to give a few thoughts on a couple of the ones that i think stand out a little bit all right just to give you a little bit of guidance, because there's a lot of monsters in the game. 1,501 <laughs> monsters. There's a lot. There's a lot to learn on top of all the monsters in the game as well. Okay, so uh, let's see. Let's see what we got here. Uh, the first standout on the fire side of things, I, I would say, is the Fire Ninja. I did a video a couple of weeks ago on on TOA. There's a stage where there's an Acroma. This, on, on this time, it was TOA Hard, and there's an Acroma. And if you don't know, that is the Light Valkyrie. And the Light Valkyrie is immune to debuffs and harmful effects. So it's very hard to deal with. It's very hard to, to out-sustain it. It's, it's, a, it's a hard problem to solve, and there are not a lot of ways to solve it. The Fire Ninja is a way to kind of cheese it. So we, we did a video where we didn't even level him up. We didn't awaken him. We just threw a little bit of gear on him. And, uh, and he can solve that problem if you can get him there. If you can keep him alive and get him to the boss... He can solve the problem for you by himself and the reason he can is because of this passive where he offsets damage that would cause him to die and increases his attack bar and it happens once per turn so the akroma hits him she would kill him because he's very squishy the passive activates he gets 50 percent of his turn meter he gets a turn because you, he's even if he's very slow that 50 percent turn meter is going to help him not get hit twice and that's it as long as she doesn't hit him twice before he goes once He's going to win. It's going to take a while, but he's going to win. So this that, that that's an option. If if you find yourself struggling on that stage of TOA, uh, he's an option that can solve that problem for you. And it could be the difference in your in you clearing TOA or not, <laughs> honestly, um, because that is among the harder problems to solve in all of TOA. So Fire Ninja solves that problem for you relatively easily. Uh, Verd is a fusion, so absolutely don't grab him. Chloe is a fun monster. She used to be a much bigger deal than she is now, but she's still pretty solid, right? She's got a uh, an arena speed lead. She's got a little bit going on in the A1. Doesn't matter. Here we've got a little bit of a heal, but her big claim to fame is invincibility and immunity for three turns. Um, so, so she's pretty cool. There's some pretty cool setups with her, and she used to be, again, quite a bigger pain in the ass than she is now, but she's worth talking about i don't know that i would say she's the one you should grab but she's worth talking about you know she's worth a, a nod anyway uh, hua is one of my personal favorites I, I was always a really big fan of her i don't hear as much about her since i've gotten back to the game i don't see her around as much as i used to i used to use her a lot she was part of my first toa clear uh, i used her quite a bit she's, she's really good she's got a slow on the a1 she's got dots on the a2 and then her passive, she decreases the enemy's attack bar by 25% and strikes again with a 25% chance. So she's got potentially got a lot of turn meter control, right? Obviously, you need the passive to prog, but she's she's really cool. She can she can hit multiple times. She's got turn meter knockback. She's got a slow. She's got dots. She her her kit works very well with itself. And if you you know in the right situation, she's very handy. I think I used to use her in dragons a little bit. She's pretty dope. I like her. Moving right along. And if I don't talk about someone, it doesn't mean that they're not good. It just means I don't really think they're worth mentioning in this conversation. And I could be wrong. <laughs> a lot of things could have changed. I feel like I should have thrown this in a little bit earlier. This is all just my opinion and my experience. 
And again, I've been out of the scene for a little bit. I'm still working on catching up. So it's probably worth checking around and seeing if any of the other creators uh, that, that have been around through the whole thing have made videos similar to this too, uh, just to get some more perspective, okay? This is just my thoughts on the monsters as we go through. Um, I don't know. He's probably worth mentioning. He, he, he is good. He's got the chance to get into the turn on the A1, which can be quite a nuisance. He's got the AOE defense down here. And, and it lands as a crushing hit regardless of the enemy's attribute, which is notable for the sake of the debuff. And then here we've got 30% attack bar, attack speed buff, and immunity for two turns. And then... Uh, grants increase attack or increase defense for one turn afterwards. So he's kind of cool. Uh, I don't know that he should be the one you should take, but he's in, he's interesting enough. All right. Now, one of my personal favorite LD, uh, not LD. <laughs> I spent so long talking about LDs earlier. One of my personal fire nat fours. One of my personal favorite fire nat fours is this guy right here. I am I am really. Excited to pull him again. I am considering taking him from the event. He is so good in Guild Wars. And that's really it. <laughs> at least it used to be it. I don't know if there's more he's good at now. He just shines so hard in Guild Wars. He's got, first of all, a pretty nice speed lead. We've got heal block on the A1. We've got a skill here on the A2 that can actually do some pretty decent damage. I, I, this can actually hit pretty hard, okay? And uh, and so he heals himself. It does pretty big damage here. It's proportionate to his max HP, but it does more damage as the enemy's HP is lower. So this can get someone out of the fight if they've taken a little bit of damage. And then this passive is really his big claim to fame. On each turn, grants a shield, which is equivalent to 20% of your HP, and lasts for two turns to the ally with the lowest HP ratio. This can be such an annoying thing to deal with. You get his HP really high, that's quite a substantial shield. If they don't have a way to deal with that shield, uh, they pretty much can't damage whoever it is because it's happening every time he gets a turn. He's refreshing that shield. So uh, it, it, he's got some really cool synergies. I really, really like this dude. And he's one that I'm considering taking because he is he is one of my favorites. I had a, I had a lot of fun, a lot of fun using this dude, okay? Again, he kind of, kind of a specialist in Guild War type stuff. But even so, I'm, I'm just such a big fan of him. He is definitely one I'm considering. Also, it's going to go without saying, the, the twins, I think, of any element are in the running, so I'm not even going to talk about them. But the Chakram Dancers and the Boomerang Warriors are, like, all ridiculous, okay? So, but, I mean, you need, the, you need a pair. I don't think they necessarily need to be the same element. I've been running the Dark One and the Wind One together because that's what I have. And I've got, I've got a few more I'm going to start working on building, but... I think the twins are all viable options. The twins are very popular and, and really good at a lot of different things. So I'm not even going to bother talking about them. Twins are in the running. I think the heart magicians are all pretty interesting as well. I think she's got... Maybe she's not the one I was thinking of. I thought she had a passive. I thought she was like an anti-cleave. Even the HP of the enemy target, excluding the boss. Yeah, I reckon Harmony is interesting, but probably not one you want to take from the event. Honestly. I think I think the Onis, I think all of them are interesting. I think the Fire one seems really cool. He is also one I'm considering. He is he is very strongly in the running for, for who I'm going to pick. Uh, we've got a Vampire Effect and a Defense Down on the A1. <clears throat> we've got an AoE here with Endure if he gets a kill. And then the passive increases his defense by 20% of his attack when the battle begins and inflicts additional damage proportional to your defense when you attack on your turn. And he can't land critical hits, which means you can just focus the attack and defense. So he's really cool and he counters a few things like the Dark Martial Cat and like Camilla. Even though he's the wrong element, you won't have to worry about him landing a critical hit on Camilla. And, and you know what I mean? You can build him differently. He's really fun. He's one of the support options that they added to the RTA thing, and I've been using him a bit. He's a lot of fun. He seems really cool. And the other elements of him all seem fun and usable. So I would say all of the elements, all three elements of him are in the running. They, they all seem cool, okay? And, and the fire one in particular 
is again very high on the list for me he is one i'm very strongly considering uh, uh, the robos all three elements i think are so cool i think i think that they all just seem like they're so much fun i really want to build i mean i really want to build all three of them i think the fire one seems very interesting i think this passive is really cool it seems like an interesting way to deal with with enemy teams that are violent proccing a lot a good way for him to cut in and then here he's got the three hitter with the uh, the three hitter aoe strip just seems like a lot of fun the water one i think seems interesting i want to play around with him i feel like there's some siege opportunity some opportunity for some cool siege teams with him so i'm gonna i'm gonna get him built at some point if i can ever stop pulling nat fives that i want to build which i'm making that sound like a problem and it's not but also <laughs> um so he seems like a lot of fun maybe not one i would recommend that you that you pick he's one that's that's just particularly interesting to me and i want to try some stuff with him he's got this self-destruct inflicts damage proportionate to his max hp on all enemies but then he comes back to life in a nuclear state he just seems like he's got some fun mechanics that could be interesting to play around with so uh I don't know if he's one I would say that you should pick. The wind one, I think, is seems really good. Absorbs attack bar with the A1. Uh, he has the same A2 and then the A3. Attacks the enemy target to stun for one turn and decreases attack bar. If the target goes under inability effects after the attack, additionally uses giant's punch to another random enemy. This effect can be activated up to three times. That's bonkers. <laughs> that seems like that could be bonkers. So, um... He seems really cool, and then the fire one seems really cool. So I think the two of those especially are options. Water one seems interesting to me, but stay tuned for that one. I'm, I'm going to get the water one built and try some stuff a little bit later down the line when, I, when I'm able to build a little bit more freely. And we'll see what, what kind of fun stuff we can come up with with the water one. But the fire and wind, I think, are, are, are well in the running. So on the fire screen, the, the, the big standouts, in my opinion, are fire ninja, fire anubis, the twins, obviously. The Oni and the Robo. And perhaps some of these, but I'm not as familiar, so I can't speak on them, okay? Water screen. Let's see, let's see who we got. Obviously Tyron, you guys know Tyron is very popular. He's got the, uh, I mean the AOE freeze is handy and he's got a speed lead iron's really cool and be pretty helpful in toa i've seen him used in rta and probably siege pretty cool i'm told uh i think the i think the water jugger got a a, a rework to a degree because now apparently i've been told he's the best bomber in the game so uh, water joker i guess is worth a mention let's see She's cool, but I don't know if she's the one you should pick. Water Kung Fu Girl. Well, I thought I clicked Kung Fu Girl. Water Kung Fu Girl is really cool. I think going to be really good still in raids. And... She has an arena lead. I don't, I don't know that she's much of an arena monster, but I think she's really good in raids. Orion is actually really cool. Kind of a, kind of a Guild War specialist again. Kind of like we talked about with Kamun, but... Uh, he's got the AOE defense down here. And then this, this is the real claim to fame for Orion. It gets down to a three turn cooldown, first of all, skilled up, which is problematic. Randomly selects an enemy four times to grant one of the following effects. Remove two beneficial effects, stun, decrease defense, or HP uh, or heal block. Additionally, it increases the attack bar of all allies by 30%. It's such a problem, especially in Guild Wars where there's only three enemies. He's gonna just randomly strip and stun and do everything he does is a problem, and he's the he's like one you know one of the RNG gods of the game, and if you've faced him in Guild Wars at all, you you know, <laughs> you know he needs a lot of speed and accuracy, and he's a real problem. So he could be someone to consider if you are wanting to you know up your Guild War situation a little bit. I feel like we have to mention Galleon. Galleon has the. Uh, speed lead and guild content <clears throat> he's got the defense down on the a1 turn meter absorb on the a2 and then his big claim to fame is an aoe defense down aoe attack buff so defense down on the enemies 
attack buff on the team and he doesn't have to hit the enemies to place it so there's no chance of him like glancing and not placing it it's just a place so he could do it on on any element of enemy to the same rate and uh if you put him on violent which is very common sometimes he'll miss one but you can follow up with the a1 and usually get that last defense down that he missed but he's pretty reliable he used to be a staple in like dungeon speed teams and stuff it doesn't seem to be the case quite so much anymore with with dots and dot explosion uh, but so probably still pretty usable there and then of course for cleaves any cleave where you're not running lucian and you need a good defense down uh, he's your guy because he does defense down and attack buff so he, he fills two very important roles in that cleave so um yeah definitely definitely in the conversation for who you should pick i think all the mermaids are probably in the conversation i don't think i mentioned the fire mermaid last time but i think any element of mermaid is in the running and she's part of the support options that they've added for rta so you can go get a little bit of experience with her if you want to see what she's like she's actually really cool i didn't realize how good she was until i, I went against someone who used her with a camilla and then some other options and the the, the team heals were just too much for me to get through uh, her passive reduces the time of all harmful effects except inability effects granted on all allies by one turn and recovers the ally with the lowest hp status by 15 percent of your hp on every turn so it heals them based on her hp which is really cool because if you've got someone that's kind of squishy it's going to be a much more substantial heal percentage wise uh, also that the reduces the time of all harmful effect is, effects is crazy uh, just by default uh, and then here we've got a single target cleanse with a shield that's pretty beefy because again you're going to have her hp pretty high and then here we've got a, a strip on the a1 so she's she's really dope man I, I i did not realize i slept on her a bit but after playing around with her and encountering her in arena a little bit she's definitely someone i'll build she's she's very very solid so um definitely an option definitely someone to consider another one that i don't hear as much about anymore but used to be crazy good was chilling and i did not remember that's his is that his n normal skin i thought he looked more like this but bigger when he was awakened he's just a, a dude with feet but that's crazy that is not what i thought he looked like i guess because uh, you, uh, you really only ever see him like that i thought he was more of a ghoul no he's just a dude just a dude with a pumpkin head all right um we got the three hitter speed with the decreased speed we've got the attack speed and crit rate of all allies and then the passive this is this is why he's so cool steals a beneficial effect from the enemy target when landing an attack your attack speed increases according to the number of beneficial effects currently on you in addition recovers your hp by 10 percent whenever you steal a beneficial effect so he was really good in dragon I remember specifically he was also good at some other stuff but particularly good in dragon i feel like i might have seen him getting used in R rta way back in the day actually that passive is a nuisance man but especially in dragon he's gonna do a really good job of helping you keep immunity off that dragon right so chilling is really cool i don't hear as much about him anymore i've noticed but he's still really cool definitely definitely someone to, to consider if you need some help in dragons especially um and then this this little handful right again the twins not even worth mentioning i feel like i've heard the water twins stand out which is why i probably haven't pulled either of them <laughs> uh but again the twins goes without saying they're all crazy good uh, we talk about all the onis i think all the onis are cool water robo i think is cool but probably not a candidate for who you should select here so i think uh, uh, to recap the standouts on the water screen for me are probably tyron orion kung fu girl is probably worth a mention i guess joker is worth a mention galleon is galleon and tetra definitely very high on the list of course the twins there's a, there's quite a few good water options it's kind of tough um again the oni oni's cool she's also good but i think she's a fusion so never mind also i hope i haven't mentioned anyone that's a fusion i'm not i haven't committed to memory all the all the monsters who are fusions now but if i mention anyone that's a fusion just omit omit that all right so tyron i don't think you should pick i think if you're watching this video for information you should not pick the water joker to be real 
I think Water Joker is someone you take later on when you want to play around with a bomber. I don't, a bomber's not going to like get you through any content, okay? So let, 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 let's pull it back a little bit and say Tyron, I think is definitely a solid option. I think Galleon is a solid option. I think Tetra is a solid option. I think Chilling is a solid option. Okay. So that, that I think I think those would who those would be my top four recommendations. Tyron, Galleon, Tetra, Chilling. And I'm talking to the newer players here, okay? They're not the best, but as far as who's gonna do the most for you earlier in the game, I think those are all pretty solid options. And they're options that I don't really think you'll outgrow for the most part. I think I think they'll they'll be good for you for a long time. And let's let's do a similar thing on the fire screen real quick, just in case. Fire Ninja. No, I think I think the suggestions here were pretty solid. Fire Ninja, Kamoon. I think Hua's dope. I think Fire Robo, Fire Oni. So yeah, we were we were we were pretty solid there. So now let's move on to Wind. And uh, of course, Lucian. Everybody needs a Lucian. It wouldn't kill you to have two Lucians if we're going to be real about it. But of course, Lucian gets mentioned here. Um, just soon. Another one, definitely going to be in our top five here. She's ridiculous, especially if you can get her on a good violent set. She's got glancing on the A1. She's got an AoE heal with attack power buff here on a three turn cooldown and skilled up. The, the recovery amount goes up quite a bit. And then the A3 is just such a pain in the ass. Balances the HP and attack bar of the target ally and your HP to the higher amount than before. So it, it takes the HP, whoever has the higher HP, the lower HP gets pulled up to it. And whoever has the higher attack bar, the lower attack bar gets pulled up to it. And uh, it, it can't be stopped by a heal block because it's not a heal, it's just a balancing effect. So um, on a violent set, she's just outrageous. <laughs> if, you've, if you've done any Guild Wars or anything, you've seen her violent proc and just completely change the situation that her team was in. Things can be looking very awful. And with a couple of violent procs, she can completely change the dynamic of what's going on. She is crazy. She's also just great heals all around. So if you're if you're early in the game and you're struggling to get through some of the dungeons, or uh, you know if you need a good support for TOA, she's kind of good everywhere. You can kind of take her everywhere and have her be effective. Uh, she's got a really good kit. She's got a solid heal. Again, she's got an unblockable heal. She's got the attack buff so that she's also contributing in that way. And then she's got the glancing on the A1. It's just like icing on the cake. Okay, so she's really, really good. Um, Wind Barb is really good as well. But I don't know. I mean, I think he's going to be really good in, in the uh, elemental raids. So he's good at a few things, honestly. Um, he's cool. I'm trying to decide if I think he's one to like recommend. Yeah, I think he's probably worth adding to the roster. He's really good, man. He's really good. Continuous damage on the A1. Got a brand on the A2, which is always nice. And then, uh, unstoppable rage attacks all enemy increases attack power and attack speed of all allies. Goes under Berserk state for three turns afterwards. Under Berserk state, the max HP is decreased by 30%. Damage dealt to enemies is increased by 100%. Attack speed by 20. And then he's got a vampire effect built in. So he's he's pretty cool, man. He's he's pretty fun. Yeah, I think he's probably worth a mention. I think all the mermaids, like I said, are solid. Um, strip on the A1. Signal target, same as the water. Attacks the enemy target three times with attacks that always have an uh, attribute advantage. The first attack removes beneficial effects, the second decreases defense, and the third increases skill cooldown time. And you can get this down to a three turn. That's a that's a nutty A3. The mermaids, man, I don't remember. Did the mermaids get a rework at some point? I remember them being okay. I don't remember them being this good. All the mermaids seem really solid now.
twins, of course. Don't do her, she's a fusion. Skogel is probably worth mentioning. I know he's killer in Guild Wars. Probably good at some other stuff too. Kind of unique as well. Um, reduces the attack bar. He's got this thing where he throws his weapon up in the sky and then it's an AOE attack on his next turn. So it'll fall, right? Uh, so you have to... It's a big hit too, because he's got good base HP and it can do a shit ton of damage. And uh, basically you have to kill him <laughs> before you take that hit or be really well prepared to take that hit. Um, so he's kind of cool. Really good in Guild Wars. Wind Robo, we talked about, it's really good. <sighs> Triana, popular. Don't know if she's one I would say you should take early on. I think the ones you should con consider early on here are, are Lucian, Chasun. So Wind Joker, Wind Sky Dancer. Probably Wind Barb King. Giant Warrior, probably going to help you in Guild War because he's really not that hard to build either. Um, and then I don't know, Wind Robo is pretty cool. Wind Mermaid's really good. A few solid options in here. Yeah, Wind Joker, Wind Sky Dancer. Giant Warrior, Robo, Mermaid, Barb King would probably be my recommendations for Wind. I feel pretty good about that. So, hopefully this helped. I don't know. I don't really know how much this helped. <laughs> but I hope I hope it gave you some some insight. Again, I'm talking mostly to the newer players here who are still feeling a little bit overwhelmed by everyone. Uh, and even sometimes when you're newer and you're just trying to learn everything, when you go in and read a kit, it's kind of hard to tell how good someone really is. You know what I mean? So hopefully this helps you out a little bit. And again, if you've if you've got more experience, if you've been around for the last year or two and you you know the scene and maybe there's someone that I'm overlooking here. Uh, definitely drop it in the comments below and if you are newer head down to the comments and see if anybody has shared anything don't just listen to me check out the comments of this video try to find some other videos or some uh, to get some other perspectives because this is kind of a big decision you know what i mean you you, you don't really want to waste it there's a lot of good options but there's also some bad options uh so hopefully i've, I've highlighted some of the good options for you but again i would probably try to get a little bit more perspective here on this from other players, other content creators, and try to make the most informed decision that you can. Also, you don't have to be in a big hurry. You've got plenty of time. This event's going on for a couple of months, and you're probably gonna pop a lot of scrolls through the course of this event, and it would be a shame to make your selection and then pull who you selected. So, unless you're just in a huge hurry, might not be a bad idea to wait a little bit, especially if you're sitting on scrolls. If you've got scrolls, definitely summon them before you do that, because you, again, you don't wanna pick someone and then go pull them from a scroll. So that's worth considering as well. But um, anyway, I'm gonna get out of here. I'm done rambling. I do hope it was helpful. And again, check out the comments, check out other videos, get a little bit of perspective. Hop in the Discord, get with people, uh, you know. That's it, get out of here. Later guys. <laughs>